Hi, this is Thomas from Apex Game Tools. In this video, we're going to look at how you can interact with the Pathfinder. We're going to look at two things. We're going to look at um, the basics of how you request a path and um, process the result of such a path request. And then we're also going to look at the different options that you have when interacting with the Pathfinder. So um, let's start by looking at some code. <coughs> So there are two things we need to do. We need to issue a path request and we need to process that path request once the Pathfinder has found a result. So we're going to do this in reverse order. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to implement uh, what I need to process a path result. And what I need to do is I need to implement this interface called I need path. Now it has, as you can see, three members on it. It has a radius and it has an attributes property and it has this method um, used to actually consume the path result once um, the pathfinder calls back. Um, now the first two um, they are just basic attributes of a unit um, and the easiest way to uh, implement these is to simply use the unit component that is already attached to the unit. So if you already plan to the, uh, to use your manual pathfinding on units, you might as well use the unit components settings for that particular unit um, instead of having to write your own. So let's just do that. Um, I'm just going to drag it in from here, snip it, you don't have to watch me write. Um, so as you can see I've simply leveraged the unit here, um, so I'm just going to return the units attributes and implementation of the um, consume path result is simply to debug lock the status of the result for now. Okay, so that was it for actually processing the result. Um, now the second thing is to actually request the path. And here I'm just going to drag in again. This is the simplest possible request you can make. Um, it's a basic path request and it has a from, it has a to, and it has a reference to the requester, meaning um, the class that requested the path and that will be processing the result. In this case, this will be the same class. And finally, we will queue the request with the path service. Alright, so that's all. I mean, the last thing down here is just a button, uh, so we can uh, have something to click to request a path. Um, so this is it for doing a path request and processing it afterwards. So let's just see that in action, and then we'll go into uh, more detail with the different options afterwards. So back in Unity, I am going to actually already attach this to my uh, unit. Um, so I'm going to start my scene and as you can see I request a path and it actually comes back with no root exists um, since my path is up here beyond um, the wall um, so just to be sure that that was actually the case we can also try and go to minus 12 in each direction um, and do the same thing and we'll see that it actually completes the request because this time it can actually reach that. Obviously nothing happens to the unit because we haven't told it to move anywhere, we have simply requested a path and we have then just debug logged the result of that uh, request. So. Um, before we go on to looking at the different options you have for requesting the path, let's just take a quick look at um, the, the actual result that you get back. So, um, in here, as we have this result, um, and we just use the status of it, um, obviously it has a bit more. So, the status, of course, you would use to make sure that what you get back is actually valid. It should have completed. If it hasn't completed, something went wrong. It couldn't find a path. If we just saw initially, it, it said no root exists, uh, which means that uh, it could not reach the designated destination. 
So first of all, that was, would be what you would want to process. Um, and secondly, there are a few more options, uh, a few more properties. The most important of which is the path itself. So if the path is a success, uh, the path finding is a, su a success, this property will then um, have the path in it. And then you can do whatever you want. Uh, if you want to change it in any way, you can of course do that. And then you can use it for whatever purpose, AI or manually issuing this to some unit or whatever you want. Now there are a few other options here. You have the original requests that you can use for as reference if you want to know um, the result you get back what was the request. And finally you have some pending waypoints. Uh, this is mainly used if the result is um, failure, that it couldn't actually uh, complete uh, the pathfinding. And if there are any wa pending waypoints that you should react to, then you can find them here. Usually, though, this will just be an empty property. Um, so that was the result. So that was pretty uh, easy. So next, let's let's look at the different uh, options that you have to issue your path request. Now, as you can see, this was a very uh, simple, um, the simplest you could make. But as you can see, there are actually quite a few different options that you can uh, assign to it. Now, some of them are not relevant um, for you to assign and some of them are. And actually the easiest way uh, to find which are and which are not is actually to look at um, the steer for path component which um, mirrors these uh, properties on the component. So let's go to that one instead in Unity and see what different things do. So. This is the steer for path component, and as you can see, it has a section called Pathfinder Options. First one, pathing priority. Well, you can change the uh, priority of units and the pathfinding. Uh, usually, this is really has no effect since pathfinding is, is fast enough as it is. Um, but if you do have loads of units and you want to prioritize some uh, ahead of others, then you can use this for that. Next, we have path smoothing. Now. There is an example or a video on the website that shows this, uh, the difference between this. Uh, so you can just use that for reference there. Simply does it or does it not smooth the path after uh, having received the result from the pathfinder. Then we have the uh, corner cutting. Um, now corner cutting means that the unit uh, will either cut corners, meaning that it will use the diagonals when it you, it moves around obstacles, or it will not. Uh, and let's just try and uh, do an example of that. So I'm just going to quickly drag in a block here. Uh, let me just um, set the draw mode to always for this one. And we're just going to select the whole block. I'm just going to make it slightly bigger. There we go. And maybe just move it somewhere. See what we want to do is um, probably want to make it so that it fills up the entire cell here. There we go. So um, my unit. Let's just make sure that we actually have a selectable unit. We do. Um, so let's see it with and without, without um, corner cutting. So when I start and I select my unit right now. Uh, corner cutting is not enabled, so when I choose a path here, oops, let's just have my visualizer open so we can see that. As you can see, it, it moves like this. It does not use the diagonal across the corner. Now, in this case where the obstacle actually fills the entire cell, this is a good thing because if it was to try and go this way, it will bump, it would bump into the wall. So as we can see, when I switch on Allow Corner Cutting, we will see that exact behavior, that when I choose my path down here, well, okay, it was actually shortest to not use it, but as you can see, when we do it like this, it will it will cut the corner, because it is allowed to, but it will actually bump into the wall, because it, it actually fills um, the whole cell at the corner. So that's corner cutting. Uh, Align corner cutting is actually a little bit cheaper in the Pathfinder, but as you can see, it's, it's well, often it's not uh, desired. The 
then we have um, off-grid navigation. Um, now, that simply means that the unit will not uh, be allowed to move off-grid. Um, right now, we have a grid and it fills the entire scene here. So, let's just shrink that down a little bit. There we go. Um, so, if this option is off, I will be able to move my unit off-grid. And this w it will also, if I had multiple grids defined in my scene, I would be able to move my unit between grids and it would um, use off-grid navigation when moving between the different grids. Now if I switch this off, m then my unit will simply um, not move off-grid. So, let's see that. Selecting my unit, nothing happens when I try to um, move it out there. Of course it still moves around inside the grid. Now this uh, also means that if you want to move between different grids uh, in your world, you will need to do that uh, using portals. Portals are covered in a, a different scenario and there will also be a video on stitching together grids, which is a separate video. So, um, let's just put this back to size. Next up, prevent diagonal moves. Um, if you have a sort of game where you actually want your units to move a little more robotic-like, or you know, you, you don't basically just don't want your units to move on the di diagonals, then you can switch this off. So the default behavior, as you've already seen, I mean, when I click down here, it's just going to move straight down there across the diagonal. Um, if I switch that on to be prevented, it is instead going to uh, have a more jagged route down there, just using the straight moves. And finally, we have this um, navigate to nearest uh, if blocked. Now, this has to do with uh, how the pathfinder reacts if it cannot find a path. The default behavior is simply to do nothing. It will simply ignore path requests that are um, designated to destinations where it cannot move, so when I try to move on the other side of this wall, the unit will simply just do nothing. If instead what I would like to, it to do is to actually move as close to that destination as possible, um, I can just check this and that is what will happen. So now when I click over here, it's just going to move as close as it can and then that will be its destination. So that's it for the um, different Pathfinder options that you can supply. Hope that makes sense. See you in the next video.